Hey everybody, David Chen here. For the past eight years, I've been filming one second of video for every day of my life and then stitching them together. This year, I thought I'd try something a little bit different. Typically, I'll publish this video each year, these one second videos all together stitched. And the final video can be somewhat amusing to look at if you're not me, but as an outside viewer, you end up seeing a lot of out of context images and videos. It's a super useful video for me personally as a keepsake, but it might not be illuminating to you about what my life is actually like. So this year I wanted to narrate the video to provide some context to it and share some of my thoughts about what I've learned from putting this year's video together. First, I wanna tell you about how I typically assemble these. Uh, my past videos, I've used some combination of Final Cut Pro and the One Second Everyday app, which I'd recommend you check out at onesecondeveryday.com. I've also written a lot about why I find these videos really valuable and I'll link to those blog posts in the description below. In the description below, you'll also find a link to the non-voiceover version of this video. So check that out if you want to. Usually I assemble these videos a few days or weeks or months after my birthday so that I can create a video that represents one year of my life. And it's always a delight to make these videos. I go back in time. I remember important moments and milestones I'd forgotten. I get to view my life in the macro versus the micro. And I realize how important some of my friends and family are to me. In the past, recording one second every day has encouraged me to live more. Maybe I wouldn't have otherwise wanted to go to that concert or that event or that dinner, but the fact that I'm making these videos uh, has motivated me to get out there and live life to the fullest extent I can. It's pretty much always been worth it. Very few regrets from going out and trying to snag those one second videos that make it into the final piece. But this year, I didn't make the video immediately after my birthday, and the reason is that many of us have been quarantining or on lockdown for much of a year. And it's been a painful and challenging year overall for millions of us out there. Honestly, I was afraid that as I look back, it would be too painful and also uninteresting. Specifically, that it'd be too painful to relive these moments uh, when life was great and that everything after quarantine started would be uninteresting and boring. And while it's true that the seconds did become more of the same and similar after the pandemic started, I actually really appreciated going back because the resulting video is a document of what we've lost. There are four lessons about my life that I wanna share uh, as I reflect on this video. First of all, I'm struck by how many restaurants I used to go to. I loved eating out at restaurants. I love the process of discovering a new place to eat, learning the menu, seeing what dishes were good and bad. But even if I wasn't discovering a new restaurant, eating at a restaurant was often a comforting experience. I loved going to a movie theater, watching a movie, and then going to my favorite Chinese hot soup place afterwards, Boiling Point, reading reviews on the internet for the movie I just saw, thinking about it. It was one of my favorite activities, and I have no idea if and when I'll ever get to do it again. The coronavirus pandemic has devastated restaurants. Uh, many people have called it an extinction level event for restaurants. Uh, so many restaurants, even the ones featured in this video, have already gone out of business and many more will as well without government assistance. In Seattle, we've lost amazing restaurants like Tilth, Local 360, Sirius Pie, Adana, Il Corvo, many of which you can see throughout my one second video. It's sad that these places that made up so much of my life are now gone. As I record this, the governor of Washington has issued a broad order to shut down indoor dining and limiting outdoor service to parties of five or fewer. If you can, I would recommend supporting your local restaurants by buying gift certificates or ordering delivery. It's the only way some of them will make it through this time. Second of all, the thing I'm struck by is that the transition from non-pandemic life to pandemic life uh, isn't very visually striking or otherwise notable. Granted, I'm not an essential worker, so I'm not on the front lines of this pandemic, either in doctor's offices or in grocery stores. I'm extremely grateful for all those people, and if you're one of them, thank you for everything you do. I know it wasn't your choice to be in the situation you're in, but people like me do appreciate you. In my one second video, the way that the transition from non-pandemic life to pandemic life manifests itself is through what's not happening. There are no outings, there are no restaurants, there are no concerts, there are no shows. There's just a lot of walks outside and me filming trees and flowers and things that I saw in my daily walks. That's one thing that's been so fascinating about this pandemic is when you go outside in most parts of the country, it's often hard to tell that there's a pandemic that's raging onward. There's this juxtaposition between life that has been completely transformed, but nature, the outside world, the natural order of things, it just keeps on going, undeterred by humanity's problems. Third, I'm struck by how much I used to travel. 
travel is something many of us loved, but since the pandemic began, I haven't gotten on a plane, and I'm unlikely to any time in the near future. One thing that the pandemic has done is it's kind of frozen life. It's like a big pause button has been pressed on our game of life. The friends, the places we lived in, the jobs we had, for many of us, we're lucky if those things stayed exactly the same since the pandemic began. And for most of us, those things will not have advanced or changed very much. But beyond just missing things like weekend getaways or vacations, many of us used to travel a lot to see family. We made decisions about how to arrange our lives geographically, assuming that airfare would always be cheap and flights would be relatively safe. In a May 2020 article at Slate about the reckoning this pandemic will cause for our living arrangements, Rebecca Onion wrote, quote, We who found ourselves far from loved ones when the music stopped turned out to have made vital arrangements based on a relationship between space, time, and money that wasn't going to last. These choices were fundamentally unsustainable. Even if I had the sinking feeling that my reliance on airplanes to maintain my webs of far-flung friends and family was ill-advised, I'd always thought we'd have a few years to figure it out, that we'd see the big change coming and arrange our lives accordingly. Now, missing everyone so much, I wonder if we waited too long, end quote. No doubt the pandemic will force us to confront the decisions that we've made about how we live, who we live with, who we live near. I think it's a good idea to start thinking about all that right now. Which brings me to my fourth and final point. Friends. I miss them. And when I look over these seconds, I see all the wonderful moments I was able to share with those around me and what we've lost in the time not spent together, the memories not made over the course of the past year. Humans are social animals, and no amount of Zoom calls and online watch parties will ever really take the place of getting together in person. As I'm recording this right now, it's November of 2020, and we are in for a bleak winter ahead. COVID case counts are skyrocketing in the U.S., hospitalizations are up everywhere. All this as we head into one of the busiest travel seasons of the year. But here's what I have to say about all that. If you can, don't travel, don't see family, don't see friends, because the one thing these seconds remind me of is how much of pre-COVID life is worth preserving. And one of the best things we can do to make sure everyone is alive and well when we get out of this thing is to not take unnecessary risks. We will be able to spend time with each other again. We will be able to see each other again. We'll be able to hug each other again. We'll be able to go to concerts and movies again at some point in the future, see a show, take a class together. The life we had before is gone for now, but it will one day return, even as it will change. And I hope when it does, we will each value much more everything we took for granted before. That is how I feel as I reflect on this year of my life. All right, thanks for listening to me pontificate for one year of my life. I hope that was somewhat interesting and valuable to you. Uh, again, I wanna recommend onesecondeveryday.com as the app that helped me to put this together. I also want to thank all of my patrons at patreon.com slash Dave Chen. Specifically, I want to thank Steve Austin, Jonathan Sutton, Christopher Yee Mon, Dan Flanagan, Jeff Evans, and Mark C. Warner. Y'all are making the work I do possible, along with all the other folks at patreon.com slash Dave Chen. I know it's been a few weeks since the last video has come out. It's been a really busy time. There's been a lot happening in the world. Hopefully, I'm going to get that video output back up again. But if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like it, subscribe to my channel hit like, hit the bell icon, um, and also check out my work at patreon.com slash Dave Chen. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.